And would you say that uh, it's basically they've taken all the big disaster movies from the last decade or two, like you got the volcano movies, you got the earthquake movies, you got the meteor movies, and just rolled them all into one? Yeah, everything. Everything, yeah, everything that could go wrong goes wrong. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, Roland Emmerich's forte, his speciality, is destroying the world. Anything really cool that happened during the filming of the movie that you'd like to talk about? Um, well, you know, being the egghead, I was there for the eggheady scenes. So I wasn't really around for a lot of the special effects stuff. Um, so, no, I can't really think. I, I hate to say it. Not a lot of special effects when you're working on a whiteboard. No, exactly, exactly. Very nice people, you know, lovely people. Oliver Platt's a wonderful gentleman. Shuatel Edgefer, terrific black actor, uh, plays the other lead. Um, there are two basic storylines, the John Cusack storyline. John Cusack, great guy. Yeah, John, he's fleeing, and uh, I didn't work with the fleers. Mm-hmm. I work with the pointy heads. Mm-hmm. Shuatel is one of the pointy heads. All right. Now, uh, why don't you tell us all when the movie comes out? You know, uh, it's going to be in theaters everywhere, so you don't need to tell us where we can see it. And you know what? Uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm looking forward to the residual checks, which hopefully will keep rolling in down the years. All right. So uh, the, the, the release date? Uh, I believe it's October, but I'm not positive. I don't know when the release date is. Well, I'll, I'll see it with some friends. Yeah, I was going to say, don't, did somebody, somebody, oh, I thought somebody actually from the crowd was throwing out the release date. These are the things that I don't grok, I don't pay attention to. Well, why don't you tell us about True Blood? What have you done with True Blood? True Blood, I'm not a serious regular on True Blood, but I do play the coroner. So I've been in a number of episodes. Last year, the second season, um, there was a season-long arc in which almost everybody in town is swept up in a uh, demoness's scheme, and we are led to commit um, horrible acts of sexual congress all over the place. So I was naked for uh, a good portion of the second season. And I actually had to sign a nudity waiver, which is now framed and on my bathroom wall. I never thought I would ever actually sign a nudity waiver. (laughs) This is turning into a very interesting uh, interview. It starts with you complimenting me, calling me attractive, then strangling me again. That was so much fun And then talking about how nude you are. Uh, Where are we going to go next in this interview? I don't know. You know, it wasn't like I was chomping at the bit to get naked, but, uh, you know, if they ask... My wife was sort of appalled, because not only was I naked, but I was also frolicking and romping with uh, women with bodacious tatas. I did have to rub chocolate cake on one woman's rather large breasts. I'm sure you hated every moment of it. Uh, Well, actually, you know, I kind of did, because one, it's freezing cold. You know, it's a vampire show, so they're shooting at night. And uh, L.A.'s a desert. At night, it gets quite chilly. So 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, there's a lot of puckering going on. You had a little Costanza moment going, it's cold, it's cold. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's hard to get much of an erotic frizzone going when, you know, you're freezing your nuts off. Oh, boy. Now, we're actually getting questions from the viewers right now, and they said, you know, you were in 98 episodes of Enterprise. Are you a big Star Trek fan, and are you uh, interested in playing the game at all? Are you a gamer, the the big MMO that's coming out? Wow, you know, the whole last part of that I didn't even understand, the gamer in the moment or whatever. Well, well, why don't we simplify it a little bit? Are you a Star Trek fan? Uh, I'm a casual fan. You know, I watched the original series. I watched some of The Next Generation. I fell off the wagon, I'd say, probably when uh, Deep Space came on. Right. But as much as anything, just because, ironically, if you're an actor, you don't have a ton of time to watch TV. That, that, um, that makes sense. So, no, I'm probably not, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not game caliber. Okay, and now the second part of that question, do you play any video games? I do not. I can barely turn on the computer. In fact, I'm a Luddite. I was born out of time. I should have been born on the prairie somewhere. So you, you have trouble even turning on the TV, apparently. I do, but body! That's my wife. Body! I can't turn this goddamn thing on! So why don't you tell us what it was like working... My wife, by the way. I should plug my wife. Yeah, plug your wife. Uh, wife. Well, not, not here, but... Uh, no, you know. let me rephrase that. My wife is a Bonita Friederici. She's the general on Chuck. For those of you who watch Chuck, she's General Chuckles Beckman, um, a fine actress, um, and uh, normally she attends these events with me so she can heckle me, but she couldn't make it this weekend. She couldn't heckle you roundly here. No, no, but I can get her on the phone. She could probably heckle huh. me from afar. M- maybe, maybe later. Yeah. Um, now, tell us what it was like working with Denzel Washington on Out of Time. You know, a, a lot of our fans, uh, you know, heard about that and said, oh, we want to know about that. Well, you know, one, of course, he's obviously one of America's greatest actors, so that's a thrill and a privilege and he's a wonderful improvisational actor 
And fortunately, Carl Franklin, who directed that movie, was very game because he felt maybe the script needed a little punching up to uh, let the cameras roll after our scripted dialogue was completed. So great swaths of that movie and the exchanges between Denzel and myself are our improvisation, which was great fun. Um, sadly, that movie, although it really didn't do badly at the box office, came out at one of those sort of strange times in the filmmaking calendar. Um, you know, there are summer blockbusters, and then there are uh, late autumn prestige pictures. And any movie that comes out in September or early October is sort of a head-scratcher. So although it did good business, it kind of slipped under everybody's uh, radar so sadly it didn't have a lot uh, it didn't help me a lot professionally mm -hmm. um, although I you know have a great deal of partiality towards it right right now here you are at uh, New York uh, Big Apple uh, Comic Con you're surrounded by geeks nerds what have you and also fans of yours people walk up to you and say I loved you in True Blood or I loved you in, in Star Trek you know what kind of emotions does that evoke well, you know, I, first and foremost, sort of pride, because it means something to an actor to know that you've touched people and moved people, and that when folks come up... You've and, touched me several times. The, the, oh. the, look, look at this, look at this, oh, oh, look oh, at that! Oh, 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 get, can the camera get a shot of that? Oh, wait, look at that! Woo! <laughs> that feels good! <laughs> I've been touched again. Holy cow. All right, uh, let's, let's, you know, it's distracting. It's oh, distracting. There, go. there, there you go. go. Wow, this is turning into a very fun interview. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I usually like to rub the interview a couple times for good luck before the interview, not during the interview. Well, you know, um, if, you, if you get a bald guy, you can just rub his yeah, head exactly. and pat it a few times. Exactly. I, you know, it's always gratifying. You know, you kind of work in a bubble. As a, I was a stage actor for many years. You have immediate gratification on stage. The audience is applauding. They dig you. When you're in film and TV, you're doing something on a sound stage, and you yourself don't see it for months afterwards. Then the audience doesn't see it until months after that. So it's at conventions and um, get-togethers of this nature that you actually get a chance to find out whether it worked for an audience, whether they dug it. Um, True Blood, for instance. I mean, I think I have a relatively small part on True Blood. I've always been kind of poo-pooing it. But some of the fans who are coming up and saying, Oh, I loved you on True Blood, and I loved the scene in which you yada, yada, yada. It sort of actually allows you in a funny way to go back to work with considerably more Elon, oh, yeah. you know, than you might otherwise have. And, and it's, uh, you know, people are so nice and sweet, and it's a wonderful, I mean, just the guy I was talking to now said, Hey, I got a house in Rome. I want you and your wife to come visit us. You'll stay oh. with us. And the great perk of Star Trek and of being an actor generally, but specifically being an actor in genre shows, is that it's a free ticket around the world for the rest of your life. I've gotten to go to Australia and New Zealand and Israel and Ireland. I just got back from Prague. I mean, Prague. There are Sounds like you're living the life. It's great. It's a blast. You know, I mean, my first priority is my, my partner and my work, and the travel comes, comes in third, but there's still plenty of time in life to get to do that. And, you know, I mean, as soon as they said, come to New York for the weekend, it's like, absolutely, having dinner with pals, take in a show. You know, make a few bucks and that's sort of, you know, nice as well. But mostly it's a free ticket to everywhere. You know, and the chat room apparently is, is loving you. Uh, you know, th th this is a very fun interview. They, they love your roles. And we could, oh, uh, no, no, not again. Please, not again. For the no. chat room. Oh. For the chat room. Okay, okay, let's pull. Oh, okay. no, they want another picture. They want another picture of that. Another picture. Here it comes. These are the Here kinds of comes. things that end up on the Internet, I tell you. It's already on the Internet. <laughs> oh, uh, you're starting a forest fire there. Oh, okay, there okay. you go. All right. So, you know, Does anybody have a sandy wipe or? Yeah, uh, we'll give you some Purell after the uh, after the interview. Uh, don't smell your fingers, please. So uh, you know, we could be here all day talking about all the roles and, and parts that you've had, but uh, um, you, you're working now. You're constantly doing new stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on? Like you just told us about 2012. Plug what, okay. what stuff you got going on right now. Well, let's see. I just did an episode of Scrubs. I'm sure that'll be on soon. Um, and I just wrapped a low-budget indie film by, I think, a very interesting young filmmaker who was a scientist, a biochemist, and who got a grant from the Department of Defense to study filmmaking, because apparently the Department of Defense 
feels that there aren't enough scientists out there. They want to try and attract scientists by